about 31, let's relook at this exponential function equation through the lens of exponential growth. So when things grow exponentially, that means each successive y value is a multiple of the, next, of the previous y value. And I just want to reiterate what we saw in example one. We had exponential growth, and you saw that each y value was double the previous y value, right? It was proportional to the, the y value that preceded it, right? So we went from 1 to 2 to 4, so on and so forth. So there was this growth factor where I was doubling each time out, all right? And that corresponded to my base being 2. So with that in mind, let's re-examine this equation with a growth model um, mindset. So a function that models exponential growth grows by a rate proportional to the amount present. All right, for any real number x and any positive real numbers a and b such that b is not 1, because again, b equaling 1, if your base is 1, you're at equilibrium. You're not growing, you're not decaying, you're constant. But an exponential growth function has the form f of x equaling a, and again, there's a secret dot here, a times b to the x, where a is our initial or starting value of the function, and b is your growth factor, or you might say growth multiplier per unit x. All right, so I wanna, again, just rehash this. If you have a times b to the x as your function, and b is greater than one, you are talking about exponential growth. If you have b trapped between 0 and 1, you are talking about exponential decay. All right, and if you ever have the case where b is equal to 1, you have neither growth nor decay. And I mentioned this in example 3, but I just want to show you, right? If you had f of x equaling 4 times 1 to the x, if you plug 0 into this function, you would get 1 to the 0, which is 1. 4 times 1 is 4. Right? Plug 1 in, you get 1 to the 1, which is 1. 4 times 1 is 4. Plug 2 in, 1 squared is 1. 4 times 1 is 4. Plug 1700 in, 1 to the 1700 is 1. 4 times 1 is 4. No matter what, I get 4 back out. Right? I have a constant here. So I'm neither growing nor decaying. All right, so with that, let's take a look at a word problem. So we have the population of China was about 1.39 billion in the year 2013 with an annual growth rate of about 0.6%. This situation is represented by the growth function. We've got P of T is equal to 1.39 times 1.006 to the T, where T is the number of years since 2013. To the nearest thousandth, what will the population of China be in the year 2031? All right, so let's think about our variables here. So we've got t, right? I see one of my variables. It says number of years since 2013, okay? And then I've also got the population of China, right? That's my other variable. So here are my two variables. I've got time, so I know that's going to be my independent or x variable. And here's my population, that's my dependent or my y variable, or technically it's p of t. So I'm not actually using x and y, I'm using t and p of t. All right, I wanna to start to talk or unpack this 1.006. All right, we were told we had annual growth, right? Or really exponential growth. And it gave us this percentage of 0, or excuse me, 0.6%, which you know is the decimal 0.006. Now I just talked about how up here when you have 1, right, if, you're, if the base of your power was 1, you would have equilibrium. You would not be growing nor decaying. But when you have growth, right, exponential growth, your base has to be larger than 1. So what you do is you start at 1 and you add your growth rate. You can see my base, my equilibrium base of 1 plus 0 0.006 is my growth rate here. Here's my base of 1.006. I can see the 1 represents equilibrium and the 0 0.006 represents growth. Now, just as a little side note, it, I know it didn't happen in this one, but let's say we had a decay rate 
of 0.6%, what I would have done instead of adding 0.006 to 1, right? This is what we did before for growth rate. I would have subtracted 0.006 and my base then would have been 0.994. All right, so whatever your growth rate is, either, well, if it's a growth rate, add it to one. If it was a decay rate, subtract it from one. And you can find your base that way. And that's not the only way to find your base. We're gonna explore other options. I, I just wanted you to see this particular one. All right, so I'm gonna erase this. I have a bunch of scribbles here. All right, you can see my initial value. They told me in 2013, which is going to be my base year, right? So this is year zero, all right? So in this year, we know T is equal to zero. My initial or my starting value for the function was 1.39 billion. And I just want you to see that play out mathematically. If I plugged zero into this function, I would have 1.39 times 1.006 to the zero. Well, what is 1.006 to the zero? That is one. What is 1.39 times one? Well, I'm getting 1.39 back. That is my initial or my starting value of my population. Now this said to the nearest thousandth, what will the population of China be for the year 2031? Well, 2031, is that an X value or a Y value? Or in this case, I could say, is it a time value? or is it a population value? And that's a time value. But there's one little catch. I do have a base here. So to find out my, my T value, I don't want to plug 2031 in here. I want to take my current year and subtract my base year. And let's see what we're getting. It looks like the year 2031 is 18 years after 2013. So this will be 18. All right, and then I'm gonna say, well, what is P of 18? That's gonna be my initial value times my growth rate raised to the 18th power. All right, because I'm gaining about 0.6% of my population per year. I have a growth rate. All right, so let's see what that number is. So we're gonna do 1.39 times 1.006 raised to the 18th power. And when I push enter, I got 1.548. They asked me to go to the thousandth place. So that's gonna be the 1.548. So my answer here is 1.548. But of course, it, it is a word problem, so you owe me some units. So we can see that this represents billions of people, right? This is billion people. All right, so there's my answer. Of course, being the math teacher, I'm gonna write this up as a sentence, right? So we predict there will be, what did we have? One, well, let me write, there will be 1.548 billion people, whoo, billion people in China in 2031. That's my guess. We can hang out, wait around till 2031, see how close I was. Maybe I'm right on the money, maybe I'm way off. I don't know how, how sustainable this model is, but this is the info I have right now. All right, so with that, we're gonna practice finding these models when I don't just explicitly give them to you, but rather I give you ordered pairs. All right, so I will catch you in a bit, bye.